Hello modelers. This is a video from John's Trains. I'm taking a look at the new uh, International Transstar 4070A kit from AMT, which was previously made by Ertl. I'm going to kind of do some brief comparisons of the two. I'm not going to get overly carried away. Um, they're both great models. And to be honest with you, this one has always been my favorite model since I was a kid. I've built, I don't know, 30 of them at least um, throughout the years. I've got about 18 of them here at my house built right now. And you can see some of them online on my um, some of my videos. Um, I've got five, six of them still sealed from when I was a little kid. Obviously the boxes and stuff have gotten a little worn, but they're still sealed. This is one of them. I think I bought this one from Kmart. And on, somewhere on the box, there's a price tag of $4.95 on it. So I got a good deal on some of these back then, but now I've bought and still I've bought more throughout the years. And they really shot up in price and got kind of, to be honest with you, ridiculous. I wouldn't have paid what they wanted for them over the last probably five years. I think it's crazy. So, but anyways, they did reissue these. AMT uh, retooled the, their machinery. I actually, they made brand new tools to do with this. And these are nice. I've opened this one up. It's beautiful. I love the kit. Uh, but I'm going to show you some comparisons. Um, starting number one, just uh, this is going to be broken up into a couple of video clips. This one's going to be short, but there's going to be a couple that are longer. Um, this particular one, I do, will say the box art on them, they use more of a yellow or white. Um, on the box and I don't believe that's from just age because these have been in boxes they've not hit, had sunlight hit them so I just believe it's a little more of a creamier white also the cab itself like I say it's not it's not faded out or anything because it's been in a box it's a little slightly bit orangey red versus what the new one is more of a darker red or just a red red but anyways very nice box art on both they did a outstanding job on the reproduction of these I don't know who did it but they did a great job whoever it was so kudos to them um, some of the things I'm going to point out on the original kit if you notice the spokes on these these are not the spokes that come in the kit um, they used a Dayton wheel versus this is looks more like a some kind of a Rockwell wheel or something like that but that's not the spoke that's in the kit the air intake system on these this is not the one that's used. This was used in the later uh, 4070As, which this is the later one. So that would be correct for the picture. But the kit actually comes with the earlier one used in the, I would say, the pre-71 and older version where they used the, um, a different style air intake. And I'll show you a picture of that. Yeah, the new ones don't come out with a round tube going into the side of it. Then the, one of the biggest things I've noticed and I've noticed for years, because I've had several of these real trucks. I've had two of these and three of the uh, Transtar 2s. On the roof, they show the kit where it's got three ribs in the back and one rib going across the front. There's support ribs, structure support. And then it's voided in the middle one where like the lights hang over in the back of the um, air horns uh, go down on the uh, roof. They don't have them on these. I've never had one of these or saw one that didn't have the rib on there. I don't know why they missed these. Once they make, came out with the Transtar 2 Eagle, they put it back in. So I'm not sure the significance of that. And then also, they did add, see you can see it in this picture here. I can't really zoom that in too close, but if you look at the box, it's got a little tiny bit of a... a trim line going around the bottom right at the bottom of the belt line it goes all the way around the back of the cab and it's in the pictures but it was never on the original kit well they did put that in now so that is on there very nice little added uh, feature um, the new one would have it would have been kind of nice if they would have added the drip rail they have a drip rail that goes behind this uh, air wing that goes all the way around the back of the cab. That would have been kind of nice. All the Transtars had that. So I, on a few of mine, have put it on myself with a little bit of uh, just evergreen stock 
you can make them yourself. It's kind of neat, but you don't need to. So, because it would still be pretty small. Anyways, well, that's all I got to say about these so far. Uh, I'm going to stop this and we're going to, I'm going to take these and I'm going to open them up and I'll show you what's actually inside. So that'll be in my part two. Thank you. Okay, modelers, this is part two of my comparison from the new Transtar 4070A AMT kit to the old earlier Ertl version. Um, I've opened the boxes already, I'm trying to save a little time. Here's both of them as they sit in the boxes. This is, this is not the one that was sealed in the first video. I don't want to break the seals on some of mine. I have about four or five of these that are open and this is one of them. So still in good shape, never built. Um, a few of the pieces have fallen off the sprues, but that's okay. Um, anyways, what's kind of neat on the new one, for one thing here, is they come with this support so the box can't crush. And I'm telling you, this is strong. I'm pushing down really hard. Now, I did pre-open the packages to make this a little faster. So all both the kits come with the instructions. They're pretty much the same. There's a couple little uh, areas where they did make some minor tweaks in there. Um, like the air horns, they show the pictures with the uh, air horns are drilled out now. Um, they got a couple other little areas where you can kind of see some, they've added a few little detailed pictures on them. And of course, be, because the sprues are different, some of the uh, pictures might be a little different, but I think they did keep for the most part them the same. They both, the kits come with these, instru these the instructions and these informational sheets. This one has this kit, this sheet. I don't, on this kit, have the other one. I'm not sure why not. Maybe I just got it in another model kit that was better. I don't know. This one, old one, came with this little mailer card. Not sure. I'm sure if I mailed that, I don't think it, there's anyone there anymore. It's from 1973 or 4, whatever year they made those. I think it was 72. But anyways, um... The new one does not come with that, but it does come with them same informational kits. Here, I'm trying to grab this out of here. Excuse me. Comes with uh, the kit, uh, the informational sheet, just like that one did too. Two two piece sheet, two sided. Yeah, I think it is just two pages. No, it should open up, I believe. Yeah, it does open up. So just a lot of specs about the truck. Then it also came with what's really cool, and they all had this too, was a, a kind of a paint schematic sheet. Showed many of the different kind of paint styles uh, you could paint. I've used this through the years. I've done, I think, almost every single one of these. I've not done the round ones yet, uh, this paint scheme. But I've done all these. And I've done all these too. So, and on several different occasions. So, anyways, yeah, that's pretty pretty handy to have. And they're, plus they're kind of cool to look at. Some people frame them. Um, that one of the biggest things about this new kit now, in my opinion, is the decals. They really went uh, over, uh, well, I guess out of their way to make some incredible decals to make it easy so people can um, paint their model and not have to do so much work to have them look like a professional job. This is absolutely amazing. They give you white uh, decals, you know, they give you the blue ones and a couple different versions of the styles. Um, these are just phenomenal. I'm very impressed with that. I would alone wish I, I wish I could just buy about 10 sheets of these things. Um, and then, of course, they give you so many more uh, de decals than the original kit. Unfortunately, this kit over here, I couldn't find the decal sheet in it. So, but to give you an idea of what comes in it, it's basically some of this information here, some of these license plates, a couple of these little state stickers, uh, and a couple company names. Um, 
Actually, I think it was just this one company name that came with it. So I'm not even sure if there's uh, some of these other ones. I'm not sure where they came from, but I do recognize some of the other ones. But absolutely phenomenal on the decals. Absolutely beautiful. So it should make it so you paint. You only have to paint one color. Put your decals on. Looks like you got a nice paint scheme. You know, and any colors kind of match these. And they, what's also real nice compared to the original models, they put this little wax paper in between so they don't, if it ever gets hot in the packaging, if you want to store it for long term, you can, uh, it won't stick and come off. Now you got a nice decal application sheet. The original kits did not have that. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to keep these always in the plastic. Um, I think that's a good idea to do that to keep them from drying out. So... That's something I will do, and I would recommend anyone else does that. Okay, then we'll take this support out. And I'm going to kind of go over some of the parts. Amazing, just amazing. These parts were, and just so you know, I'm not paid by nobody. Nobody knows I'm doing this. No, no one from this company knows I'm doing it, but I'm just a, a, real, a real avid modeler who likes doing this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to actually see if I can, well, I wanted to try and get a nicer background so you can see this chrome much better, but the racks are so much easier to work with. The chrome on them is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the, the original ones were too, but look at the grab handles, how easy they are just to cut off the sprues. There's the air horns. You can kind of see very closely. They now drilled out the centers of these so they actually are like trumpets. All the grab handles are easy to get off the racks. All the chrome is so much easier to take apart. Let's just set these down. These did come all plastic wrapped. I just opened them. And here's one of the really nice things. Anyone who's ever built one of these will notice on these kits that the door handles right here these things always break trying to get them off the other racks and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes they have these on with just one little tab so nice and of course they did give us the Alco wheels that are the same ones that are in the Transtar uh, 2 Eagle kit so the mirrors are nice they actually got the little mirrors with the little snap pin on them so they kind of snap into the uh, mirrors. I don't even think you have to glue them. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but uh, it looks like you wouldn't have to. Uh, the chrome on it, all the pieces do appear to be a little, to be very nice. I see the bumper is slightly, slightly warped a little bit in the center, but uh, that's not a big deal. So, but the chrome looks very nice. The uh, racks, the uh, racks with all the pieces on them, these things are really nice, super clean. And again, whoever planned this, they planned these out to be really easy to uh, t uh, take off. You know, they, they were, it's like they weren't really worried about trying to save space. They got everything spaced out nicely, nice and even, so they were easy to take apart. These are the Dayton wheels that I was talking about. If you look at the box art and look at what's there, huge difference. These are the ones that were on my semi-trucks that I had. And there's the rears. No longer chrome, which is nice. I always had to strip mine off to get the um, chrome off, which was easy to do with uh, some degreaser. Then one of the other cool things, and I did not take these out of the package. I'm not ready to use it yet, is the clear, the glass. There's the windshield, nice and straight. Uh, or amber tail lights, I mean um, turn signals. Nice windows, side windows with um, the headlights on there. And then you got the uh, rear red tail lights that are really nice to have. Already, already in color. Um, your wheels, they come one piece vinyl which is really nice with nice deep treads on them. 
Um, they, they're so you can sand them and get and actually make them look road worn. The original ones that came with the two two piece vinyl ones, you couldn't do that. Um, I'm gonna set this over here. Show you the racks again. The racks. This particular model, I don't know why. I only bought one, but somehow they gave me an extra frame rail. I don't know, I've only got one kit, so I don't know if that comes in every single one or what the significance of it was. It looks like it's busted off a sprue, so maybe it fell in from another kit or, and somebody's gonna get it by a kit and it's missing. I don't know. But again, the, the parts, super detailed. And I did happen to notice, I think the detail's sharper on these. I did notice on the mud flaps, if you look, you can see the eye is actually beveled outward. And on the original model, all the IH is all hollow, like the H is on this particular one. Kind of neat. So then also, they did something else really cool. The front axle. They made the front axle shorter, which is really nice. They cut it, it looks like, I didn't measure it, but I would say, have to guess by looking at it, it looks like about an eighth of an inch X that they took out of it. And to me, I'm not positive, it looks like the angle of these right here the with the pins or the, for the turning area, looks like they straightened it out. On the old ones, it was always crooked and they always tipped in. I hated that. So I always had to modify these things and I've done it on every single one. Since I uh, became a real enthusiast at building models, when I was a kid, I don't think I did anything. Just used them the way they were. So, but all the pieces are nice. No longer a chrome fifth wheel, really nice. So that's kind of nice. And the air intakes no longer chrome because they, they never were usually on the trucks. So kind of nice. Um, yep, extra frame. Um, yeah, and they only did give me the one half extra. I didn't take all the pieces out. Um, and again, another piece. Everything's perfect and very nicely arranged. So this work, these will work really well. So super easy to get off the sprues. Um, I mean, it's just amazing how, how they figured this whole deal out to get it nice and actually make these more useful to people and so they wouldn't break and fall apart you know because so many times you'd be working on one of these kits and something would snap on it because it was hard to get it off the racks so these cabs again i just love these the the molding job on them is absolutely phenomenal so I'm just throwing this back for now and then we're going to go back to the other kit and I'll show you that, the original kit. I was going to try and do them side by side, but I don't have the space. So we will just have to do it this way, make do the best we can. I'm going to put this back. I like the old kit a lot. Um, I like the new one better in the sense that it's easier to work with, but I'm still a collector and the old one to me is a, a nicer is a nice kit and one I will never ever knock because I think they, they did so well when they made these back in the day. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in here and cover this up and then we'll go to the, uh, the original kit. Okay, now the original kit. I'll show you what I find with that one. Again, the instructions. There, these are kind of worn out, beat up a little bit. They still have the same paint aids on them. Um, this paint aid is used to make a mask to paint the model. That's, uh, they have a picture of one inside the instructions. Um, actually not in the, this page. I think it's on the other page. Let's see if I can get to that. Right here. To paint this paint uh, scheme. And I'll tell you what, throughout all the years, if you look at this thing, 
Look at how it's already not, it's not sticking to the cab that with using that rubber cement. That never worked. I've tried that so many times. It never worked. I ended up taking this thing here, using this as a guide because it's really accurate. And I made vinyl. I took uh, automotive vinyl adhesive and I took different colors and I laid this over it and I cut them out exactly and just adhered them as, with vinyl. And they came out beautiful every time. I've got bunches of these things that I've made and they all work very well. So you can try to do that with the rubber cement or whatever material you think works to glue it, but in my opinion, it never worked good. And again, this came with that too. So the windows of the old one came and the clear came all as one piece. And look at the windows very frequently. Now, I don't know if that'll happen on these over time, but these are always warped. They always warp. They, you put them in some hot water and you could bend them back. You said to be careful because they snap super easy. Then again, the turn signals and the tail lights are clear. So you have to use translucent paint. Again, not a big deal. I've done it many times. Didn't care. We're always worked. The chrome. Um, the chrome on them was always very good, especially considering the time that these were made. Um, again, there's your uh, chrome wheels, and you can kind of see. I mean, that's. I've never really seen a set of Dayton wheels or spoke wheels that were chromed, uh, unless they're on some kind of a show truck customized. But uh, I always strip these using uh, degrease, so degrease or purple power or something like that. That always worked good for me. Chrome fifth wheel, hmm. only on a, a custom truck or something like that that no one was going to use. I'd mentioned on the box that the air intake was not the correct one used in this. This is the air intake they use. This is the scoop and the air cleaner itself. This is bolts of the frame. This goes up and over the top down inside the um, into the air cleaner. The one on the picture of the box, if you look at it, they used, this thing goes directly right in the side of it. That's on the later model, which this, with this grill is the later model. But the one that's in there is in the uh, 71 and older Transtars. I've had several of these real trucks, and this kit is built identical to my 69. They, all these pieces are what my 69 came with, except the grill. My grill... On mine had a fiberglass grill, just like this. This one, that's the exact grill mine came with. So, and I had a 72 that had the chrome grill, and that one was like this. And that one had the uh, air intake going in the side. My 70, my 69 had it coming in just like this one. I do like these ones better the way they are. Okay, I'm going to show you, if you look, look at how these, on the original one, how all the grab handles, everything, it's, it's double mounted onto the sprues. These were really tough to get apart. Really, really tough. Um, and the windshield wipers, everything is all double mounted. I'm not sure the reason the, if to keep them secure. I'm not positive of any of that. And here's the air horns as we were talking about. If you look, these things are not drilled out very well. They just got a little tiny, tiny curve inside. Not much. Actually, as a matter of fact, many of them didn't even have that. So I must have got lucky on this rack. Um, the door handles on these were absolutely horrible to get off the racks. They're right here. If you look right here, double tabbed, and they always, and they're thickly mounted onto these. You can kind of see how thick these are right there. They're really hard to get off the racks. And many times, even for me, they broke in half. I glued them, but it was a pain in the butt every time. So they really resolved that problem, too, with the new ones. Made it much, much easier. Um, the cab, very nice, even on the original one. Uh, I will say they did have a little bit of swirling problems with these. If you look at the, you can kind of see at an angle. 
the plastic, they it had some swirls in it. Now they, you can't feel them, but when you'd paint them, sometimes you could still see those through the paint. I don't know what the reasoning was, but uh, these were done, these in my opinion were very nice. Now this one's a little scratchy, probably from being in a box all these years. But if you look at the back, you can really see the swirls in the mold. The new one doesn't have any of this kind of stuff. They're just much nicer. Um, but don't get me wrong. These are still absolutely beautiful kits. And I think that's why they were sought after by so many people. Um, in the original kit that they kind of helped to resolve in the new one, the boxes got crushed and these things always broke them. And I've even seen where these things are broke on the sides. Kind of stinks that they ended up like that. So, but, you know, you just fix them the best you can and move on. So, now here on the original kit, they don't have that little uh, trim line going all the way around the back. Where, where on the new one they do, which is kind of nice. And here they don't have the little vents. The new kit comes with the little, are there, I guess not vents, they're um, uh, air deflectors right here to deflect... Uh, I suppose air from the coming in uh, these windows when they're open or whatever it's it's for. So, but again here, these things, these kits, all if you look at the roof, they're missing the rib down the center of the roof. They have been for ever since these were new, and I noticed this many 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 years ago. There wasn't nothing you can really do about it, but I did know notice they figured it out because on the Transtar two models the eagle kit they put this rib back in here so if you ever look at your transtar 2 kits it's there i never seen an a model without this on it i've had two of them personally myself a 72 and a 69 and i actually did have one old junker parts when i was a i think it was a 70 and they all had um the, that extra rib on them again not a big deal no one who doesn't know trucks is really ever going to notice that so it's not that big a deal, but something I always kind of looked at and thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. So, and again, on my 69, these things were uh, fixed closed. These ones are fixed permanently open on the later models, on the uh, air intakes. So the body, similar, everything's the same on this, pretty much. Um, it's a, on the new ones, it's a lot sharper mold. Uh, the detail seems to be a little sharper on the inside on the new one but you don't see a lot of that so i never really worried about that too much here are the wheels that come oops geez, yeah they're spilling out here are the wheels that come with the old kit not a one piece these are a two piece and you can kind of look and see the tread i'm trying to get a yeah there uh the picture of the, of the tread you have to slight uh, sand these so slightly otherwise you sand the tread completely off and then these just snap in. I never glued them because once they snap in, they seem to stay, especially once the wheels, both sides of the wheels are glued, they stay in pretty solid. So, and I've got lots of these spare wheels like this. I kept them throughout the years. I, I still use them from time to time on different things. Um, they're not my favorite, of course, but I'm not gonna throw nothing away. So I'll just get these out of here. Then uh, the old kit, comes with a black frame, which I really, really liked. Um, I don't know if this is open or not. No, this one actually is not open. So, but it comes with a black frame and it's, um, it's kind of nice sometimes if you didn't want to have to paint something. You know, it was always kind of nice to have the frame already uh, pre-made that satiny black. And I use these many, many, many times without painting them. Um, here, actually, I'm going to see if I can show you this in the picture. But here you can see the mud flap. The letters on the mud flap, you can see all they're all sunken in. You have to paint them, let the paint fill in. On the other one, they have the eye standing out. Then the other thing that's very noticeable on this, I'm going to try and pull this down so you can really see it. I should have taken these out. I apologize for that. Um, the front axle. If you look at that close, you will see, hang on here, I'm trying to fight this a little bit. There we go. If you look at the front axle, come on, you will see, <laughs> still trying to do that. These areas here, 
where the, the pins go, where they go to the um, uh, turning part of the axle, they're slightly tilted in at an angle. You know, they're, and the new ones, they got these perfectly straight here. There's, this is more straight up and down versus at an angle. Because these, when you turn the wheels, they always look like the wheels are, the camber is off or something like that. Or the you need, um, um, like the, um, I guess, kingpins or whatever on the axles. You just need something to straighten it out. And so I always heated mine up and bent them because I couldn't stand that. That really bugged me. And I like that they fix that. And I've done that on so many of these models. If you look at my models online, you will see that I have fixed that on a lot of my wheels. And I've cut them to fit the length because these are eighth of an inch longer. If not, maybe a touch more. So, but uh, yeah, they just, they were kind of always one of the sore spots for me. You can really tell in that one how it leans in. So, because they, they maybe did do that in real life, I don't know. But on the model, it looks really funny when they're turned, the wheels. Then the last parts are just the red parts, uh, that stuff that came molded in red, a lot of the engine. The kind of neat thing about the engine being in red was that uh, International, most of the time on the old Internationals, they always painted their engines red no matter what the brand was. Um, I i sure it's just something to do with the international red color but uh, they were painted all my trucks that i had came with red engines uh, my real ones so it was kind of a neat thing that they did now in some of my pictures i painted them different myself uh, to match to be a different color but they did come that color most of the time i don't think it was quite this darker red but anyways that's kind of what you get with the old kit and like i say Phenomenal kit. I love the old kit. I will never get rid of any of these. I mean, I, I've sold some over the years, but I love these kits so much that, I mean, this has been my favorite kit since I've been building a model since a little kid. And that's why I bought so many of these when I was a little. And I still have a lot of these. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just a, they're, they're a nice kit. Um, and I think it's it, they're well worth uh, buying the new one. Um, I think it, it's probably, a, unfortunately, I hate saying it, it is a better kit than new one. I don't like to rip on stuff like that, typically. Um, but it actually, this kit is absolutely beautiful, this new one. I can't think of anything real negative to say other than a few things that I kind of still wish would have been changed or, I guess, corrected. But... They're, it's not that it's wrong. It's just that, that some of the pieces aren't, aren't correct for the period of that model. So I'm sure people are going to argue with me about that and tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead. That's fine. Like I say, I've had a couple of these real ones myself I've owned, and I know what the parts were on them for the different years. And because I've been around these trucks all my life, I, I've seen them. I know what they have. I know what they come with. So... Anyways, that's that's my uh, review of our comparison review, not a review of building the model at all. But I am going to build this one here pretty soon. Um, when I do, I will may maybe make a video or not. I don't. I'm not sure. Um, we'll we'll see how it goes, and then we will. Um, you'll definitely see what it looks like when I'm done. But I'm going to use them decals. I'm very anxious to try them decals out. Just a note on the decals too, what's kind of cool is you actually can uh, use the decals for three different trucks. So, because they give you three different styles. So don't throw them away when you're done, which I think most of us modelers don't do anyways. We, most of us even keep the boxes, which I do too. So anyways, I just thought I'd show this. Let me know your thoughts, um, good or bad. Um, when you get yours, tell me what you think. If you find some other neat little tiny things, there's there's a ton of little de things that are probably a little bit different, but that's this is all I do, you know, when I'm showing my videos. So I mean, it's the best I can tell uh, by what I what I've looked over. I'm sure there's things I miss, but uh, just let me know if you find something else that you think is interesting. Thanks.